how to convert my pace car clone into a fast fuel injected uh, easy EFI fuel injected engine right now I've got a good fuel injection system on here it's the old uh, this is my patina air cleaner this is an old Holly Commander 950 it was like their uh, second generation one thing bad about it, it runs very well, it's just that I have to have a laptop and some software on it to make it self-tune. And the laptop actually runs the self-tuning program that this guy wrote. And it's just a hassle because it doesn't, I don't always hit the RPM and map ranges I'm trying to hit. And it takes a while to self-tune, so I'm doing the easy EFI conversion on this thing. What I'm going to do, I've got a whole other manifold I'm going to show you in a second. I had it welded up with bungs and put fuel injectors on it off of a 5.2 Magnum. They're 24 pound injectors at 43 PSI. So this is a this is what's coming out. This is a 340 I had in here. I uh, got it from a friend and it's, it has low oil pressure. I don't know if something's in the oiling system that's bouncing around, but uh, it, it goes up and down. I've driven it for about a year and a half now. And uh, this low oil pressure, just a lifter starts ticking. They've all been swapped out. Change the push rods and rocker arms and everything, and it still uh, goes up and down. So this thing's coming out, and I'm showing you what else. Uh, another engine I'm putting in, another 318 with a fuel injection. Uh, this was a Edelbrock Pro Flow. They went in uh, with Magneti, Magneti Morelli. Who've, uh, they've done a lot of fuel injection. They've been around for a long, long time. They do motorcycles, cars. Uh, Edelbrock went in with them and um, they, can, they came out with this Pro Flow about 2005, 2006. I bought it and put it on my car, but then last year I converted it to uh, Easy EFI with the same intake manifold and throttle body. All I did was convert everything over to work with the new Easy EFI system. So uh, yeah this runs very well. Uh, so well I've got to put a new clutch in it. I don't know if you can see the computers down there. I've got a I've got it mounted right there underneath in front of the console and I also have a spare box because I do a lot of driving in this car and don't want to have to worry about a box going out and be on, being on the side of the road so he has a lifetime warranty but I just uh, want to have something with me just in case the thing goes out okay so a little bit of a mess here but uh, what I do is I just got a wiring harness and the computer wiring harness from fast it's kind of messy but uh, everything has to be shortened up got way too many the length on these wires is way too long so everything's gonna be shortened up once I get it in the car I sent this uh, intake off to a guy out in Colorado and he welded up the bungs for me I had a friend drill them but uh, I don't have a TIG welder so I sent it to this guy and he welded everything up for me I sent him some raw blank fuel rail that I got uh, off the web it's like 10 bucks a foot he drilled them for me and uh, I plumbed everything. And so uh, this is my engine stand. As you can see, here's my EFI fuel filter, my fuel pump, pre-filter. I've got a jazz fuel cell I picked up, a little cheap at a swap meet. Here's my wideband O2 sensor that uh, I looked up on the web and found it. It's just, uh, it's just like a universal wideband about 75 bucks so this is my timing light this is a regulator I got off of uh, I think it's JDM performance and I put a gauge on it it's like a 20 buck rate regulator but it, it does its job for this um, the easy if I needs a tack adapter so what they were giving you for a while when you first got it was an MSD. This is just an MSD I had on the shelf because my tack adapter went with my kit on my uh, 440 when I put it on, so I don't have another one. So uh, I have the Mopar ECU on this guy. 
and had to use the MSD just so I get a clean tech signal off the bottom here. So, uh, as you can see, here's my handheld. I only have one handheld between the two Easy EFIs because once you get it tuned, the running itself tunes, you don't even need that anymore. So, here goes. I'm gonna hit the button. I have this running, it's, a little, it's warmed up, so let's see how it takes off. You can hear the injector cycle pulse and then on off button. This is just a oil pressure light that I have so I know that oil pressure light the oil pressure drops down. So if I hit the button you can see it starts right up. You can hear the idle air control motor kick in and it right away goes to my idle that I have expected is 950. So uh, I still have my vacuum advance hooked up. I've got a map sensor plugged in just off of the old GM, like a GM truck. This is a Holly fuel injection throttle body that I took the injection pod off the top just so I can use it for the throttle position sensor, idle air control motor, and uh, yeah, with this, uh, all these injectors came off of a 5.2 Magnum in a junkyard. Uh, Set my fuel pressure at 43 with the engine not running with the hose on. So as you can see, it sucks it back down to, uh, let's see, it's right about 40. I had it, it was a little higher, but the vacuum sucks it down, so it's not quite so high. So, uh, the timing's all set. I had that set. I always, always do that with, uh, with all the spark plugs out and the ignition hooked up and it's cranking fast so I get more oil pressure and I can set my timing. But as you can see, uh, this easy EFI controller, once I get it in the car to replace that holly, it's self-tuned and it's so, it's so cool. They came out with a newer one. It's uh, supposed to be released in March and it's, it's April now, so it, it's, it also self-tunes but it also controls your spark. I wish uh, I had that instead, but you know, Right now, I'm just using a stock uh, Mopar electronic ignition distributor, and I'll be using my standard ECU to uh, spark it. So that means if I have a spark problem on the highway somewhere on the power tool or something, I just stop by an AutoZone Advance or Riley's and pick up a distributor. So, this is it. Here's the EVFI controller. I got that off of eBay. I think it was less than $200. Uh, by itself, I got the wiring harness from Fast directly. It's the multi-point fuel injection harness. Here's my uh, handheld. You can, I don't know if you can see it. Let's go to live data. It lets you see everything. There's my RPM, my target air fuel ratio, and my air fuel ratio. So it's learning right now. It's constantly learning. Shows my idle air control motor, my RPM, pull and temp sensor, throttle position sensors at zero because I'm not getting in any gas. You know, air fuel, battery, map. It's all cool. So air temp sensor. That's a little high because I've got this mounted in one of the intake runners. We got in the plug and then pull the sensor on and mount it right in my air. Like uh, my other one I'm not a full board. But you can see. It helps to uh, get this thing running on an engine stand before you put it in the car. Uh, before I, when I first had this thing running, I had a problem with it. My, uh, my idle air control motor was uh, screwed up. So uh, I happen to have another one over here on this engine. Excuse the mess. That one was the one I had in here. And, well, what can I say? I just dunk our parts to throw these things together, except for the new computer. And this one was a good one. I think they use them out of a Jeep, same style. I've got three other GM ones, but they don't fit with the new ring placement. So, that was it. Um, no other problems. I had some old rings leaking here at the fuel rail. I went and got a... Uh, went to AutoZone and got this uh, it's a universal kit here. With O-rings. It's basically for everything. Chevy, Ford, GM, and uh, Chrysler. So, universal O-ring kit and each box services the injectors you need for those kits. So as you can see, the thing runs very well. 
and uh, this thing's going in my car. This thing's a 318, so I can pull the 340 out and get it rebuilt, or I'll go through all the clearances and see why the oil pressure is low and flush it all out. But as you can see, this fast EVFI, this thing's idling smooth, doesn't control my ignition, I've got a good throttle response. Working. I had a, this was a throttle body I found in a swap meet, had a swap meet for $15, the guy had it, I think it was from the, one of the original Holly uh, projection systems, which was junk, it wasn't drilled and tapped for an idle air control motor, I got a friend with a machinist, and he took it into his shop and uh, drilled it out for me and drilled my hole, just so that uh, I can get this thing I can get the idle controlled under a uh, idle air control motor. So, as you can see, my $15, $15 throttle body. Uh, this is a Edelbrock intake. It's a Torque or two, which is it's kind of big for my uh, application because uh, I do a lot of driving. I, I try to get fuel mileage and performance, and for everything low RPM, unless you're racing, you should have a dual plane. Uh, as you can see on this one over here, this is a dual plane that uh, was converted. I found it on eBay. $150. The guy wanted to go with a, a low block instead of a raised block, big block. So it was on eBay. So I thought, picked it up for $150, already drilled with fuel rails. See, so I had it running with a mega squirt on this engine stand. And uh, that's it. As you can see, this fast easy EFI is uh, some good stuff from comp cams. And this thing's going in my car as soon as I uh, pull the old engine out, drop this thing in, clean up, shorten up all these wires. Every one of these wires gets shortened, spliced back together, soldered, heat shrink, taped, and then back under the little plastic tubing. So, uh, once this thing's running in the car, it's uh, gonna. I'm gonna take another video with a thing on the road. All right. So thanks for watching.